duct tape on my old Bible and packing tape that's clear on the inside that I bought a new one on Friday. And it was kind of neat, you know, I was in there looking at all these Bibles because I had to go to Red Deer. And uh, this lady was looking at Bibles too and she was sitting at a table and she had all these Bibles spread out in front of her and figuring out which one to buy. And she's watching me just go into the one section and look at the one. <laughs> she figured I kind of knew what I was doing. So she had a few questions and and uh, so we just started chatting. And, and here she's from a little town which, uh, Nessus, Nessus, something like that. Nevis. Nevis. Nevis, that's it. And uh, so we get chatting and uh, she says, to, she asked me, come on in, we're just starting. We're just waiting for you. <laughs> and uh, so, she asked me, you know, where I was from, what I did. So I told her. And uh, she says, uh, we just have a little wee church in Memphis. And she says, everybody wants to go to the city to go to church. Everybody wants to go somewhere else where they got all the great music and the big church. And I said, yep, sounds familiar. <laughs> and uh, she said, but the pastor, he just keeps preaching that, and I feel so convicted that I'm supposed to stay in Nevis and go to our little church. And I said, amen. You tell your pastor. I said, when you get home, the pastor of Bashaw agrees with him 100%. <laughs> and I said, God calls you here because he's got a purpose for you in your community. And that's where he wants you to minister. And when you run outside, I believe 100% you're disobedient. 100%. But I said, you answer to God, not to me. <laughs> so, that's the purpose of God, is to call you where you're at. That's what the Bible teaches. And we're the body of Christ in this place, to minister in this place and to be an example and a testimony and a witness in this place. And it's so important. It's so important. Amen. Would you bow with me as we open up our Father, we just bless you and we praise you and we worship you. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for the marvels of your grace that you continuously pour upon us. Ask today, Lord, each one here, give them an anointing of your presence. Touch their hearts, Lord. Let the presence of the Holy Spirit and speak a word, Lord, that's fitting and encouraging. Oh, 
Well, my great granddaughter is doing just awesome. And if she keeps doing as well as she is, she will be home, uh, which would have been her due date, which is around 6th of June. Praise oh, God. that's wonderful. Yeah, she, yeah that's and so awesome. she's five and a half pounds now, and uh, yes. Going strong. Yes, she Praise is. Praise God. So just so, so thankful. Amen. Anybody else? Um, we have a really dear friend who really helped us grow closer to God. And she had a stroke last week, and she's just getting home. And I'd like the church to remember her uh, in, in their prayers. Uh, her name is Annie as well. Yeah, so, that's a good name. It is a good Praise name. God. Pastor, do you want to lead us in that? prayer for Henny now? Father, we just bless you and we praise you. Yes, Jesus. We worship you. Father, I thank us. Thank you for the testimony of people who are faithful to encourage others to walk in Christ and to walk in faith. We testify of the love of God. And Father, we bring before you this lady named Henny who's had this stroke. And we ask, Lord, that you would touch her with your presence and encourage her. We ask that you would bring healing and strength and comfort to her. We pray, Lord, that everything and all the people that surround her, Lord, would be a blessing and an encouragement to her. And we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We just got, we just uh, skipped over from the uh, gospel of bluegrass and uh, uh, it's kind of uh, interesting to see how the gospel is sung there and it's reaching out to a lot of different people. We heard the Lord's Heart last night. We were there and then uh, this morning there was a group, I forget the name, it was the New Fire or something that uh, every song was a gospel song. So All right. it's enjoyable. Good. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else? Well, I'm just thankful for the way that God has blessed me through the trials I've been going through and the trials of others, how he is just so faithful in that. And the song, uh, the chorus, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, has been on my heart a lot the last couple of days. And it's just how, you know, when things kind of discourage us or threaten to overcome us or our emotions are all over the place, how we can just go to the Lord and read his word and pray and just how his spirit ministers to us and it just makes everything calm and peaceful and just puts us back on the right track and I'm just so thankful for that. <laughs> Anybody else? Don't be left out. I'm thankful my, my daughter makes Australia safe and she's pretty scared to go by herself. And, um, my sister was happy to get her to nanny for her for six weeks. And my sister's baby came through her surgery good. She doesn't need another surgery for another six months, so I'm uh, just grateful for that. And um, my son Joel, he's been very depressed, and I went and saw him about a week ago, and he's doing a lot better, and he's got a big construction job now, so um, God has been very like faithful through a lot of trials I've been going through, too, so I'm just grateful for every little thing he's done. And all the big things, too. Amen. He's in the little things as well as the big things. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? And most of all, I'm thankful for the way that God made everything. Yes, He did. He made everything. Amen. Amen. I'm just grateful that nobody was killed in the fires up north. Um, my son and his girlfriend, Sandra, their settlement where they live was basically unharmed. They're without power. Um, they aren't allowed home yet. They're in Grand Prairie, but my son came home yesterday, and they're expecting to get back to their home um, today, tomorrow, as soon as they can get the electricity restored. But I'm just so thankful there was no deaths. Amen. Amen. 
Yes, that was a terrible thing. Anybody else? Only left out. The Lord's always working everywhere. Marine, do you have a Bible verse for us? <coughs> I will praise the Lord at all times and constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who trust in him.
たんですけど Cell phone. <laughs> so I did, and I called her up, and she said, Well, that's funny, I was just sitting here. I thought we should have communion, and I should call Dan. <laughs> so it's kind of neat. And、uh, I want to share a few things with you from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, or 11, sorry, on communion. But before I get into that, I want to share something with you. You know, there's no place in the Bible where it's recorded of anything other than communion is a body thing. Now, I know over the years I've been in places way up in the camp or the bush where I've had communion by myself or with a few other people. But there's no record or instruction on that in the scripture. Communion is for the body of Christ. Is when we gather together corporately as a body. And that's why the instruction that Christ gave and that Paul repeats in Corinthians is so important. Because Jesus loves the church. God loves the church. And when someone separates themselves and does their own thing, they're part in the will of God. And it's so important for us. To grasp the hold of this great <coughs> love that Christ has when we get together as the body of Christ and do what He wants us to do individually and corporately as a church. We short one? We、no. short a few. That's all right. Give us some. No, no. Take that. Okay. That's what happens when you do spur the moment、yeah. stuff. <laughs> Somebody was a pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Bless the Lord. I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And the Lord Jesus took some bread to give thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this. To remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing and proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. And anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. The importance, the graciousness of God. To allow us to partake in this covenant, this agreement that He made between you and me and God. Not only you and me, but all of us together. <laughs> and the importance of us recognizing the body of Christ and acknowledging how much God loves us. Bless the church. He loves his church. He loves his people. So much. And we know that you just loved us so much that you even ordered your son, Lord. You sent him to die for us so that we might have 
the chance. Father, we just thank you for this bread we're about to receive. We know it's his body. It's not the mother's body. It was broken for us so we could have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, we just thank you so much, so much for this chance to partake in these emblems of you, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. Thank you. First time I've ever seen that problem. It's a wonderful problem that. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. tried to argue with him and create a discourse to make him look bad or try to, to uh, dissuade what he was saying the people from, he utterly, graciously put them down in such a way that they couldn't answer him. <coughs> and so James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who at one time were called the sons of thunder by Many came to Jesus and they said, We got a request. We got a favor. And Jesus said, What do you want? And they said, We know you're going to have a glorious kingdom and you're going to sit at the throne of the earth and you're going to rule the kingdoms of this earth and all heaven is going to bow before you and all earth. And we want to sit at your right hand. Jesus didn't rebuke them because they had a revelation of what was important. You see, they knew the kingdom of God was the greatest, most important thing in this earth. And the things of this world were of irrelevance and second part to the things of the kingdom of God. And when we recognize these things, what a wonderful thing it is. One day this week, I took a day to fast and as I was working and 
And it was an interesting thing. Why? Because it just so happened someone asked me, and otherwise I would never have said it. But I saw that the world was creeping into my way of thinking. Well, what am I going to do with my finances? And what am I going to do with this? And that's not in a bad way. It's in a good way. I'm not used to having so much. <laughs> and so what am I going to do with this? And what should I do about that? And I'm thinking all these thoughts, and it's controlling my mind. And one night, one morning, I guess, I realized this is ridiculous. The things of this world are starting to fill my mind and I'm thinking about them all the time and I'm not thinking of the things that are important. So I took a day just to fast to talk with the Lord and clear these things out of my mind. Not that I don't have to deal with them. But I recognized in me that they were starting to take preeminence and I didn't like it. And so I, I got to get rid of this real fast. I can do something about it. Now these two men, they had an understanding of what was important. And Jesus asked them a question. I don't know if you ever noticed, but Jesus asked a lot of questions. He's asked me a lot of questions over the years. I go to him with something and he comes back to me with a question. And I gotta think about that for a while. And he says, well, you don't understand what you're totally asking me, but I want to know, can you drink of the bitter cup of suffering that I'm gonna drink from? And are you be able to be baptized with the baptism of suffering that I must be baptized with? Oh yes, they replied quickly. And Jesus said to them, yes you will. You will indeed drink from my bitter cup and be baptism with, baptized with the baptism of my suffering. But I have no right to say who will sit on my right or on my left. For God has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. Now when the other disciples heard that these two guys had asked such an audacious thing, they were indignant. Can you believe what he asked Jesus? I mean, can you believe what he wants from God? And Jesus gathers them all together when he hears about the talking with each other about the James and John. And he brings them all together and now he starts to teach them something. And he said, you know, the rulers of this world, they like to lord it over people. And the officials of this world, they flaunt their authority over those that are underneath them. But among you, it's going to be different. You see, you are world changers. You are those that have the word of God. You are of those that know the living God and what his kingdom is all about. You are ones that have been entrusted to the mighty understanding and wisdom and knowledge of God himself. You are not just one sitting in a little pew in Basha. You are ones that have the knowledge of the kingdom here and have continually taught it and continually walk it out and participate in it. You have been entrusted with the greatest resources that this world has ever seen. You have the kingdom of God within you, the presence of the Holy Spirit. But with this great authority, he tells them. you got to be different. So whoever wants to be the leader among you must first be your servant. And whoever first wants to be first among you must be the servant of everyone else. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life 
as a ransom to purchase the life of others. <coughs> the kingdom of God is so different than the kingdoms of this world. It's not even a comparison. An authority in the kingdom of God is <coughs> so different than authority in this world. Gave them a total different perspective. And so now they're leaving and they're heading out. And crowds of people are following them and the disciples are following behind Jesus and multitudes and multitudes following them. And they're realizing that all this authority that the multitudes are following is so different than the way the world does things. And as they reach Jericho, and this large crowd is with them, there's a blind man sitting on the side of the road named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. And he heard that Jesus was See, he'd heard a lot of things. This wasn't the first time that he'd heard about Jesus, but this was the first time that he was coming close to him. You see, you can hear a lot about Jesus. You can talk a lot about Jesus, and you can read a lot about Jesus. And you can see a lot about Jesus on TV. But it's a whole mess. It's a whole other thing when he's walking by you. And you know he's coming by you. You can sense that presence. You can feel there's a difference in the air. He's coming close to you now. And Bartimaeus, he knew it. He sensed the excitement in the air. He could hear the crowds of people. of the innermost parts of his lungs he starts to holler. It's an interesting thing what he asks for. He hollers out, Jesus, son of David. And so when the blind man hollers out, have mercy upon me, Jesus. He was reaching into the very thing that Jesus came to give this world and the people in it. Mercy. Oh no, I, I don't, you know, I need this, I need healing, I need, I need money, I need, I need relationships restored, I need this and I need that. Jesus said, no you don't. You need the two things I came to give you. Mercy and truth. Mercy for the way you think and the way you act and the way you talk and the way you walk. Mercy so that your sins will be forgiven and you can be restored in relationship with And so Bartimaeus, he's crying out to Jesus and he says, have me mercy. And all the crowd says, be quiet, Bartimaeus, be quiet. 
And don't think for once that Bartimaeus only said this once or twice as recorded in the scriptures, because I'm sure the crowds would have just passed by and said nothing. But Bartimaeus had a strong voice. He'd been waiting all his life as a blind man for a glimmer of hope. And here it was. And there was no way he was going to be quieted or still, even though the crowds all said, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. Oh, no. I know Jesus is clear. He's near. And I am not going to keep quiet when he is near. I am going to get the audience of his presence. You see, people will tell you to keep quiet. People will tell you all kinds of things. But you know what you need. You know exactly what you need in your heart. Just like Bartimaeus, you need the mercy of Christ to touch you. And you need the faith of Bartimaeus to believe that he will give you what you need. So as all the people are saying, quiet, 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 he only shouts louder. I like that. All these disciples and these crowds, I say, just, just quiet down, you blind man. Just quiet down. And you know Jesus knows exactly what's going on. He's not just walking in the front of this crowd of people or in the center as they're all surrounding him and he doesn't know what's happening. He knows exactly what's happening. He sees that faith in Bartimaeus. And he hears the cry of mercy. And he hears what all the other people are saying. And Jesus stops. And he looks around at the people that are around. over there. There's a crowd of people in between us. And this crowd of people is telling him to be quiet, but Jesus says, bring him over close to me. So the Bible says, they call the blind man. And now instead of saying, be quiet, they say, cheer up! <laughs> be happy! It's your day. Your time has come. Your ship's coming in. Jesus said, go get that man and bring him over to me. He's calling you. You need mercy to that. standing in your way. Call. Bartimaeus, the Bible says, took off his cloak and he threw it away and he jumped up this blind man. I'm sure somebody had to grab him. I'm sure. I'm, sh I'm sure. And lead him. <clears throat> but he, it's recorded, he jumped. He didn't just slowly get up from the ground. The Bible says he jumped up. And he runs to Jesus. Jesus knows what's going on. He knows what's going on in your heart, in your life, in your mind, in the situations that life has for you and all the circumstances that you are in. He knows. And I want to tell you something. He's not going to make a move towards you till you desire something from him. And the minute you desire something and ask him for it and come in his conditions, he's going to
Jesus asks, what do you want from me? Do you think for one moment that Jesus didn't know the man was blind and what he wanted? No, he knew. But you see, Jesus always says, come and ask me. I want the Holy Spirit. Ask me. James says, you do not have because you do not ask. He didn't want to be healed tomorrow or the next day. He didn't want something to take place down the road. He wanted it now. He wasn't hollering and screaming for something in the future to take place. He was hollering and screaming because he wanted it, and he wanted it now. Sometimes I wonder if that scripture verse has application a little bit to this one. Jesus said, if you come to me, you must come as a little child. You ever see them? I want it, I want it now. And I'll squawk and scream until I get it now. And not only does he say Rabboni, he says, my Rabboni. My Savior. My says instantly he could see. <coughs> instantly he was healed. And he followed Jesus down the road. That's an interesting thing. You see lots of people let Jesus heal. They were healed and they went off down the road. Some of them Jesus even said go show yourself to the priest. But this man Jesus didn't say anything some of them, he said, come and follow me. But this man, as the Bible says, he just followed Jesus. <laughs> what do you have need of today? Not for somebody else, not for a situation, not for a circumstance, but for you. Jesus to do for you today. He's passing by this way. There's a song we used to sing. He's passing by this moment, your needs to supply. What a wonderful Savior we serve. Like Bartimaeus. service this morning. I'm going to give an altar call. I'm going to ask Ruth to come up and play on the piano. For any of you today, would you have something that you want to publicly stand up and say, Jesus, I have a need. I have faith. And I need your mercy to touch my life. You come and me forward. Bob's going to come up. We're going to anoint you with oil and we're going to agree in prayer. That 
Jesus is going to touch you today. Have mercy upon you. For the need that you have is enough. So you come. If you want prayer, you come. Don't wait. The enemy will say, be quiet. In your hearts, you know what you need. The enemy will say, like the crowds of people, be quiet. Don't expect it. You've asked for it before and it never came. What makes you think it'll come today? But you have faith. You come, you come now. You believe God. And we will believe God. Thank you, Jesus.
things that discourage and divide and separate would be annulled and destroyed and crushed. That your mercy would flow through what by your river cleansing and making whole and fresh. Prophesy and speak in new tongues. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence and agree with Jesus. For you said in your word that you ask for the Holy Spirit. and situations that's come to place in the past. That you would fill her with faith, confidence, and assurance. That you would cause a new perspective of seeing things to flow into an understanding of the kingdom and the wisdom of God. Understanding of the righteousness of Christ.
so ordered me today. <laughs> God loves it, you know. He's, it's not just to see the joy when people come to him. He loves it. You know, it's, it, he loves it. We say to Jesus, have mercy on me, have grace for my situation.
see a word which David even spoke when he said, there is a joy in the journey. That it would well up like rivers and springs of living water that give fresh and refreshing refreshness. To bring a peace in the calm of the storm. sense the presence of your spirit but to be able to understand and comprehend and combine. In Jesus' name, I speak. Pardon now, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Go stand beside your wife. I was just so thankful for you guys and your faithfulness and all the things you do in the house of the Lord. lives they touch, that you would give them a fresh hope and joy, an encouraging word, a word of faith, a word, Lord, that will build the kingdom of God and destroy the works of darkness. I pray, Lord, that you would give them peace, revelation, wisdom, in all the things of life that they deal with. And all the different people in the walks of life there. Anoint them, Lord. Fill them with fresh the anointing that comes from above. Fill them afresh with your joy, Lord. Give them strength. Give them protection from the enemy and his wily ways. Cover them, Lord. Cover their home. Cover their minds. Cover them in all the places that they put their feet on. And I ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Got a closing song for us? We better.
Chronicles. And so oh, yeah. Victory is ours. Amen.